Hello, welcome to another interesting economics class. My name is Emmanuel Widow. In our class for today, we will be considering the theme International Trade and Balance of Payment and the topic International Trade Part 1. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to define international trade, explain the reasons and problems of international trade, list and explain the advantages and disadvantages of international trade, distinguish between international trade and internal trade, and lastly, state the differences and similarities between international trade and internal trade. The desire of all nations is to ensure that her citizens have access to basic amenities, such as food and water. They do this by either producing or bringing in these goods and services from other nations. Now, without bringing goods in, most of the things we have around us today will not be accessible. For instance, this watch, at the back of it, we have made in Italy. If someone did not peradventure bring this product into Nigeria, I won't be wearing it. That is possible through what we call international trade. So what is international trade? International trade refers to the exchange of goods, capital, and human resources between two or more countries. International trade goes beyond our national boundaries. So we are looking at a trade deal between one country and another country. International trade involves two kinds of movements, which are the inward movement and the outward movement. When we talk about the inward movement, we are talking about import. And when you're considering the outward movement, you're looking at export. Now, trade is possible because two nations have mutual understanding, a mutual agreement. For instance, Nigeria has a product she desires to trade with, and China also has a product that is suitable for trade. This can only be possible when both nations have a mutual agreement on trade. Now, the image shows us the movement that exists in international trade. Let's take this as a continent, Africa, and then let's look for a country, Nigeria. Here we have an airplane coming in and it is tagged import. On the second line, we have this airplane leaving this country, Nigeria, and here we have export. Let's look at the forms of international trade. There are basically two forms of international trade, and these are bilateral international trade and multilateral international trade. So let's explain them one after the other. Bilateral international trade refers to trade between two countries only. For example, a trade between Nigeria and Cameroon can be seen as a bilateral trade. While multilateral international trade refers to trade treaties between three or more nations. In this case, because there are three or more nations, they have to come into an agreement. And this agreement helps make trade between these trade partners easy. An example of the multilateral international trade is the African Free Trade Agreement, which encourages trade among African countries. What are the reasons for international trade? The following are various reasons why countries engage in international trade. Number one, uneven distribution of natural resources. The world we live in is made in such a way that the resources found in one country might not be found in another. However, these countries who do not have these resources they require have to source for them elsewhere. As such, trade has to come into play. For example, Nigeria is rich in crude, and Togo might not necessarily have crude. Yet, the Togolese have cars they drive on, and you cannot power your automobile without fuel. 
So since the Togolese desire petroleum, they have to import from Nigeria. So you see why there is a need for international trade due to uneven distribution of natural resources. The second reason is differences in climatic conditions. Certain agricultural crops do better under certain climatic conditions. For example, apple. We cannot grow apple here based on our climatic condition. But when you take apple to South Africa, it thrives because the climatic condition is suitable for apple production. Does that mean that we in Nigeria will not eat apple? No, we can eat apple because of international trade. Furthermore, differences in skills and technical know-how is another reason why we engage in international trade. Certain nations do not have skilled manpower and to become productive, they need to bring in skilled technicians to run their industries. So you see why international trade is needed. Let's go further. We have cost of production as another reason for international trade. When the cost of producing goods and services are expensive, nations naturally desire to import these goods rather than produce them because it saves cost. So cost on its own based on production determines if a nation will go into international trade or not. And then we have local market expansion. Producers who have the ability to produce numerous amounts of goods have the desire to expand their local market. So if I have excess of goods in my warehouse, there is a need that I need to ship these goods to other nations who need them. This is part of the reasons for international trade. We have looked at the reasons of international trade. Let's consider problems of international trade. The first problem is distance between countries. The distance between Nigeria and Ghana, for instance, is long and it will be difficult for a producer to practically ship his or her goods from Nigeria to Ghana based on the long distance between both nations. So you see how distance causes a bridge in international trade. The second problem we have when considering international trade is the problem of language barrier. As a Nigerian, I speak English, but citizens in Cameroon speak French. If I am to engage in a trade deal with a Cameroonian, you will see that it will be difficult for both entities to communicate. So you see how language barrier destructs communication, hence hindering international trade. Furthermore, we have high cost in transportation of goods. For a producer to desire importation or exportation, we are looking at goods in large quantity and shipping these goods which come in large quantities require huge amount of money. So the problem based on the resources the producer has will hinder his or her ability to bring in more goods from foreign countries. Next is the problem of risk in transit. International trade involves movement of bulky goods via air or through the sea, and in rare cases, roads. These bulky goods are exposed to perils of the sea and air mishaps. When this happens, it results to a total loss of goods being imported or exported. Now, lack of information about foreign businessmen is another problem faced by international trade. A businessman in Nigeria who desires to ship in goods from Germany has a financial obligation he has to meet. This producer in Germany might not know the capability of this businessman in Nigeria worldwide. With this as a gap, it is difficult for the producer in Germany to actually determine the creditworthiness 
of his or her foreign buyer. So you see why this is a problem. And lastly, we have import and export restrictions. Every country imposes custom duties. These duties that come in form of tariff or tax are meant to restrict the amount of goods and services that come into a country or out of a country. They do this for various reasons, but these restrictions limit the quantity of goods and services an individual can bring into a country. Let's look at the advantages of international trade. Number one, creation of employment opportunities. International trade encourages foreign investors into a nation. When foreigners come in to invest in another nation, they create employment opportunities for the citizens of the host nation. Secondly, international trade promotes economic development. Underdeveloped nations benefit from their developed counterparts via international trade. So if I do not have the resources in my country, I could lean on developed nations in order to grow my economy. Another advantage of international trade is equitable redistribution of natural resources. Through international trade, nations who lack or have inadequate mineral resources can actually access these mineral resources from those who have them in excess via international trade. It also encourages exchange of goods and services. International trade makes it possible for nations to exchange goods and services they naturally do not have. And lastly, it provides a source of revenue. Tax duties and import duties are ways through which nations generate revenue for projects. Having looked at the advantages of international trade, let's look at the disadvantages of international trade. The first disadvantage of international trade is exploitation of underdeveloped nations. International trade leads to the exploitation of underdeveloped nations. How? When a nation depends solely on a developed nation for its resources, the developed nation will want to milk all the resources the underdeveloped nation has. And this is seen as exploitation. Another disadvantage is that it leads to unemployment. When goods are brought into a country, they come at a cheaper rate. This is done so that citizens can access them but this has a toll on infant industries who produce at a higher cost hence their prices are high since they cannot compete with their foreign counterparts they shut down by shutting down they increase unemployment rates in the country another disadvantage of international trade is that it encourages dependency. Most nations choose to import rather than produce. So when a country is dependent on another country for its resources, it therefore means that such a nation renders its citizens unproductive. And as such, if there is a destabilization in the country a nation is depending on, it leads to a distortion in the host nation's economy. Furthermore, international trade discourages self-reliance. International trade makes citizens desire more foreign products than locally made ones. To them, the foreign products are authentic than the locally made ones, but that's not necessarily the case always. So at this point, locally made products do not sell as much as the foreign products. And lastly, international trade gives room for the importation of harmful products. Harmful products such as ammunition and hard drugs find their way into various nations through international trade. 
this is as a result of the bribery and corruption that exist among local authorities along the borders. Having looked at what international trade is, let's look at what internal trade is. Internal trade, on the other hand, refers to trading activities that exist within a country. In this case, trade does not cross international boundaries. For example, the trade between Akwaibom and River State, all in Nigeria. In this case, a farmer in Akwaibom State might desire to transport his or her goods to River State to sell. As long as the trading activity is done within the confines of Nigeria, such is regarded as internal trade. What are the differences between international trade and internal trade? The first difference is that international trade uses one or more currencies. Well, internal trade uses only one currency. Secondly, international trade involves two or more countries, while internal trade revolves within a country. Thirdly, international trade moves across different national boundaries, while internal trade does not cross boundaries. Fourthly, international trade is usually higher in price, while internal trade is low in price. The fifth difference is that international trade has high government intervention, while internal trade has less government intervention. And lastly, international trade ends foreign exchange, while internal trade does not end foreign exchange. Having seen the differences between these two trades, let's also see the similarities that exist between them. The first of them is that they are all medium of exchange. They all involve the exchange of goods and services. Secondly, both trades arise as a result of inequitable distribution of wealth. Thirdly, both trades involve cost in the following areas as transportation, insurance, warehousing, and advertisement. And lastly, trade involves the use of middlemen. So international trade and internal trade involves the use of middlemen. Having looked at international trade and internal trade, we have come to the end of this lesson. But let's take a quick summary of what we have learned so far. In this class, we learned that the buying and selling of goods and services between two or more countries is known as international trade. We also learned that the two major forms of international trade are bilateral trade, which involves exchange between two countries, and multilateral international trade, which involves exchange between two or more countries. We also learned that some of the reasons for international trade are to reduce the cost of production and to expand local market. We further learned that the problems associated with international trade include language barrier, distance, import and export restrictions. We also learned that international trade is beneficial because it provides employment and it is also a means of foreign exchange earnings. Further learned that the buying and selling of goods and services within a country is known as internal trade. Next, we learned that international trade is trade across countries, while internal trade is trade within a country. And lastly, we learned that both international trade and internal trade involves exchange of goods and services. Let's not be in a hurry to leave. Let's test ourselves on how much we have learned in our class today by taking few test questions. Question one, dash refers to the exchange of goods capital, and human resources between two or more countries. Option A, internal trade. Option B, international trade. Or option C, European trade. The correct answer to this question is option B, 
international trade. Question 2. Bilateral international trade is trade that involves dash A. Three or more countries B. Two or more countries or C. Two countries The correct answer to this question is option C. Two countries. This is where we draw the curtain in today's class. I hope by now you can define international trade, state advantages and disadvantages of international trade. Until I see you again in another interesting economics class. Bye bye. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, drop a comment, and subscribe to our channel. You can also turn on notifications to stay updated on new videos on this channel. This brain friend video was brought to you by Sinforest. For more of these amazing e learning videos, get your copy of Brain Friend. With more than a thousand e learning videos, over 74,000 test items in more than 40 subjects, a career counseling guide, and many other amazing features, Brain Friend remains your foremost e learning and exam preparatory software. Brain Friend. Learn better, make excellent grades.